that had to take a lot of courage when you told that guy, because you went all the way to New York, you were able to get this agent, you were doing well with it, but you literally said, I've got to let you go. That's got to take courage. No, I and, and I I was not that blunt with it. I slowly just yeah. kind of let it, the relationship no okay. resolve. Uh, because I started once I got the agent in Chicago. Yeah, you know the 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 product illustration paid three times what publishing play, paid. Yeah, so right, that's I, I'm, gonna, I'm making more money, and I'm doing things that are even more fun. Mm -hmm. You know. Yep. And 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 so I I get that, and then I gradually. Um, uh, things started to happen in that way. Uh, and again, being ambitious, I went to, I, uh, and Tom was probably, told, he and I went to California together mm -hmm. uh, on a trip, you know, because Tom wanted to do uh, animation at one time, mm -hmm. 3D animation. And, and uh, we went out to California on a trip together. And I wanted, I wanted to do movie posters. Mm. And I had a portfolio with some movie posters that I had generated from some films as samples of what I could do. And he and I, I think we spent about probably 10 days driving around LA. And I thought, oh, this is better. You know, it's not as big as New York, but it's a big city. It's a lot of opportunity. It's still, it's got advertising. It's got publishing, mm -hmm. you know, it's got movie industry. It's got all these things that I was fascinated with all in one city. So I picked up an agent there hmm. in Los Angeles. And then um, and then also there is, I went to San Francisco and I picked up an agent there in San Francisco uh, that was doing a lot of work for Levi, uh, Levi Strauss mm -hmm. and uh, other food companies and uh, product companies. And so I had four, four agents working for me at one time. Hmm. So by the time I resigned from Hallmark Cards, mm -hmm. you know, I was making twice the income I was making during the day just by going home at night and uh, creating and enjoying that work. Right. And it was, it was, it was looking back at, I don't know how I got through that um, other than just fear. Yeah. Right. <laughs> your dad's head, your voice in your head going, you got to have a job. You got to have some money. This, I'm sure that was in there too. Oh yeah. But you know the so things just kind of uh, once I once I saw the artists in New York, you know that experience was necessary for me to have to go through that mm -hmm. just to see the world that I was walking into. But the potential was always there, and and I know talking to Mark and and, and I was saying to Mark is you know uh, you know I want I like commercial advertising because thirty days I get paid, mm -hmm. you know. And that was important to me, making income. And I said, you know, ultimately, I might want to do fine art. He said, well, if you want to get paid every 30 days, <laughs> I'll do fine art. Yeah, he's right. <laughs> and, and that's what, and I, and I avoided, you know, uh, the fine arts for a lot of years because I was doing really well. I was in demand mm -hmm. you know, in the advertising world. You know, my work was on billboards, it's in books, uh, magazines, uh, uh, covers of books in grocery stores, um, in the movie theaters. I did a lot of movie work, for, uh, movie poster work for Paramount Pictures, 20th Century Fox, a lot of concept work. And a lot of it was mainly about drawing hmm. uh, because I have art directors find out that I could draw without having to use reference. And I would get projects like on Thursday evening. Hmm. You know, they would messenger or, uh, projects over to me and uh because i didn't i didn't leave my studio i couldn't afford to leave my studio so they'd have messengers bring things over to me so over the weekend i could charge twice as much right I'm working on the weekend while they're at home so when they got in on monday or tuesday morning i had messenger artwork back to them for meetings and, and uh, concept art mm. and that was that was uh i still i kind of missed that it was probably they printed. Were, there was probably a lot of energy. You have to really get yeah. it done. You know, there's deadlines. Yeah. 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 The deadlines and the, and the fact that a, a lot of times the art directors were, you know, 
you know, they had painted themselves into boxes. They couldn't resolve things. And they would, uh, I work with a lot of Disney art directors and mm. some of the other smaller uh, art, uh, ad agencies. And they knew that I could, I had an uh, ability to uh, enhance a concept, you know, and I would give them their version. And then I would do maybe one or two of my versions of how to make it better. Mm. And they enjoyed that, uh, that the fact that I could help them think through a process. And, and, uh, th and, and I still enjoy that. You know, there's multiple ways to solve a problem. And when, when they get into uh, deadlines and, you know, they're running out of money or something like that, then they panic. Mm -hmm. and they say, what, you got to do this. And I'm like, no, you don't have to do that. You can tweak it a little bit here, do a little bit here. And, uh, and that, that was uh, still, I, I still occasionally do projects mm. uh, for some of those clients because they remember my ability to, to draw and help with uh, enhancing concepts so that they're more marketable. But, uh, but you know, it's, it was a fun, fun ride doing all of that. L.A. was fun. I lived in L.A. for about five years. What are some of the posters that you did, movie posters? You did The NeverEnding Story, didn't you? NeverEnding Story. Great movie. Uh, NeverEnding Story, uh, Tales from the Dark Side, Godzilla 2000. Yeah, the Godzilla one, the guy that does my podcast, Pat, yeah. Shout out to Pat. He he had seen that and he goes, "That was in my bedroom." He goes, "That was my favorite poster." Because yeah. I love that. Cool. So, <laughs> no, that's that's really cool because I, you know, I uh, uh, I did a lot of work uh, that was on that was uh, published in L.A. Mm -hmm. uh, on billboards and, and newspapers and magazines and on and on and on, and 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 it was. Uh, and but people never saw me because I was so busy working. Mm. Um, that was the the strategy I used. Was a lot of people want to take holidays off, and I'm and you know I'm I'm self employed, and I'm thinking I can have Christmas in June, right? You know, I you know I and if I work doing Christmas holiday, I can charge twice as much. Mm -hmm. You know. And and when other illustrators are just kind of going, oh, I'm not working Christmas, man. Right. And I'm like, why wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> and and so I was. It was the business side of of uh, making an income was very present in my as to how I went about getting my career established. Where were but, you living when you were doing all this? Were you still in LA? In LA? You're in L.A. You moved to L.A. Yeah, I was in. Well, I was in Sherman Oak which yeah. is the valley yeah but yeah it was uh and the the agent that i got there in in los angeles was i was living in kansas city when i started working with her mm -hmm. and she said, just said you know you got to be here in la that's know? true and i said no i don't i i know there are other artists out there living wherever they want to and she says but you're you're young and i need you to be here Mm -hmm. and I'm saying, I don't want to be in a big city. And she said to me is, if you really want to succeed, you have to be here. And she said also, because you're you're exceptional, uh, you're African-American, there are no artists here in LA uh, that are doing what you're doing and the quality of what you're doing. And I want you to meet people. Mm. And, and I'm like, oh, okay. I said, well, if, if I'm coming to L.A., that's going to be twice as much rent and all, uh, living expenses. Then you got to get me some work so that I can know that you're serious about that. I'm just not going to up and move. Mm -hmm. Well, how much do I have to send to you? How much work do I have to send to you? I said, enough to get me to move that, that I can afford to move out there. And it took me about six months mm -hmm. to from the work she sent to me. And she had to exaggerate and say, uh, you know, he's too busy to come in, but I was still in Kansas City. Right. She wanted me to go into 20th Century Fox and some of these other studios, you know, to meet art directors. And so by the time uh, I moved there, um, she was uh, excited for me because uh, we had done great business six months and I wasn't even there. Mm -hmm. And and being there, 
just made her that much more in, uh, invested in my success. Yes. And she was getting me work. She was getting me a ton of work. And the, the thing that surprised her, uh, and I kind of warned her about it, I said, you know, I'm young, I'm African-American. It's not going to be good for me to be going in meeting people. And she was like, no. And front and front being, being Anglo, being white, she just had no experience with that. And mm. she also French. She was yeah. in Paris. And, and uh, so she had very, no deep understanding of our culture. Right. And uh, she would take me into in, to meetings sometimes in order to pick up projects. Right. People would spend all their time looking at me mm. and looking at her like, what's going on here? <laughs> and uh, but they were always very impressed with the work that yeah. I produced. Yeah. Uh, and we I did lose jobs because mm -hmm. people were not expecting. Um, and when Franz realized this is not going to be good for us as a business for you to show your face. Mm -hmm. So uh, you don't have to go come to meetings anymore. And so for for the rest, you know, we probably did that for about a year and a half. Then she just said, we're, we're losing big projects. And not because of your work, it's because of what you look like. Wow. People are uncertain about that. Right. And that make you feel. Being in your life. How did you deal with that? How did you internalize that kind of, you know, slap in the face? It just made me more determined. You know, yeah. that... Again, those are the things as a child, you know, with what I grew, how I grew up, and uh, yeah, there was always issues, right? And I, my, uh, my commitment, um, and and I had an uncle that was very supportive, you know, my dad's brother, he was very supportive of me, uh, because he just said, you know, you're very unusual in how you approach things, and he said, you know, you're always going to get some rejection. And you mm. got to be prepared for that mm. and know that it's not you. It's about the people that are rejecting. Yeah. It's, it's because, so you know, yeah. And, and those are, those are things that I still, you know, I'm, success and is, uh, is individual. And I, I just don't let things like that get in my way. Otherwise I would have given up years ago, you mm -hmm. know, I'm 45 years into into my career as a professional artist and you know it's always there uh it's it's all about spending the time to know how to navigate around mm. crazy i call it just crazy because it's you know uh, i i'm doing something that i enjoy doing and i i'm not done yet and so until i'm done i've got to deal with Things that make no sense to me, yeah. um, and and uh, and learn how to adjust around things, and instead of confronting things straight on, unless I have to, you know, um, that was me, you know, uh, with Hallmark cards. I was confronting things head on, and that, you know, caused a lot of people a lot of anxiety. Uh, but for me, it was just like you know, I'm done. Yeah. Uh, I've got other things I need to do. And and those those are I still get uh, contacts from people that remember me being a homeowner, mm -hmm. and they're saying, you know, you're doing all this stuff you talked about when you were 21 years old. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, yeah. and they said, well, most people, you know, give up or go away. Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they do. And, and so when me, you're, it's, it's, you, yeah, good. I was gonna say, so when you're in L.A you clearly become very successful. You're getting lots of jobs, big jobs, important ones, important things. How long did you stay in that lane of doing that kind of illustration in LA? Oh, well, you know, uh, I did it up until like 2005. Mm -hmm. You know, and when did you Los start? Angeles. When, when did you start doing that in LA? Uh, I moved there to LA in 1983. Yeah, a long time then. Yeah, and, and uh, I, I stayed in the, in Sherman Oaks in Los Angeles for about five years, and then I wanted to move to the country. I didn't like my wife didn't like being in the city. 
Mm -hmm. And we found a small community, San Inez Valley, mm -hmm. was north of Los Angeles, uh, kind of the, over the mountains uh, to Santa Barbara. It was Santa Barbara County. Mm -hmm. And my wife and I bought a small house there. And it was, you know, country. It was, you know, Arabian horses and thoroughbreds being raised and wineries. You know, a lot of entertainment people from Hollywood moved mm -hmm. to that community. You know, we were friends with Cheryl Ladd and a lot of entertainment people. And uh, that was fun. But I was still doing a lot of the movie work mm -hmm. uh, because I had established myself in L.A. that, again, couriers would drive up the highway to deliver projects to me or FedEx, you know, uh, UPS mm -hmm. and so on would bring projects to me and I would ship them back that way. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people liked the work that I was doing because I was doing a lot of exceptional, unusual things mm -hmm. not just portraiture a lot of you know uh the uh, barbarian movies are being done at that time mm -hmm. schwarzenegger dragons and a lot of fan is fantastic you know star wars and raiders of the lost star so i was doing a lot of concept work for these guys because mm. uh, i could draw mm -hmm. and they knew that they could give me something last minute and i could come up with with a res <clears throat> and resolve issues for them and so that was uh, that was a really nice place to be where other artists had to be in LA, but I could be outside of LA and, and still get that type of work. And even when we, when I chose to move here to Colorado, I was still getting work from Disney and other movie studios that mm -hmm. said work to me because, and I had one art director just told me, don't you ever go anywhere? Don't you ever stop drawing? Mm -hmm. Because going to find you mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't have people that can draw and and that was a that was a nice compliment mm -hmm. that he liked what i and i had worked with him probably a good 15 years uh doing projects um uh, just because it was um it needed a perspective that a lot of artists weren't capable of doing a lot of uh, artists were drawing from photography they had to have exact photo reference. I didn't have to have exact photo reference in order to create. Mm. And so that, that meant that cut, cut some of their cost of doing photo shoots. Yeah, you know? All right. And so for me, is it was like, okay, so you know, can you add a little bit more to, to what my fee is going to be? Mm -hmm. uh, because I'm not going to charge you much as a photographer, mm -hmm. but you know, I'm going to do these things for you. So that that moved me out of by moving that distance and trying to get away from a lot of the the uh, the change that happened with digital imagery you know when the movie studios start to use a lot of digital imagery i did not want to be a digital artist mm -hmm. and i want to be a traditional artist and that that really started to happen in the late 90s mm -hmm. where uh, a lot of artists were beginning to use computer and uh, I, I made the decision in like 2001, 2002. I was living here in Colorado at the time. I'm just going to refuse. Well, I, the digital, the, the, the art directors were younger and they did not understand traditional art. Mm -hmm. They could not believe that I was drawing as fast as I was drawing. And they thought I was doing things digitally. And when they realized I was doing things digitally, I was doing things traditionally. They just said, well, we can't use you because we're going to have to make changes. And I said, I can change faster than you can get a digital artist mm -hmm. you know, to right. figure out a program that's going to help. And, and uh, that was that's when I realized I needed to pursue that dream I had about being a fine artist and doing wildlife mm -hmm. as I see it. Uh, and, and the other thing is I was very fortunate to the agents that I had when I was in commercial would always try to get me projects that revolved around nature. You know? And that was, you know, uh, magazines. The mm -hmm. uh, Anheuser-Busch, you know, doing college mascots. A lot of college mascots are animals. Yeah. So I did a lot of that. So I've always tried to slip in an animal every now and then mm -hmm. with the work that I do. And, uh, and I was very fortunate that um, when I decided to get out of illustration, full-time 
that I was going to have to be able to uh, do something unique and different in order to compete with a lot of the, the wildlife artists that are in the fine art world, get incredible talent mm -hmm. in the wildlife world, in the fine art world. And I wanted to be in the West. I wanted to be doing uh, nature of the West and also around the world. Mm -hmm. And that's one of my pursuits is to not just do Rocky Mountain wildlife and animals that are native to North America, but doing uh, imagery of animals from around the world. And so you got out of more or less out of illustration uh, in around 201. Is that right? Yes. And so what did you do? So you go, I'm going to do fine art. And but, you know, you don't have that background to know exactly what that means in the sense, I'm assuming, with galleries and shows and all that. You have to now you have to figure out that whole thing. Right. Yes. Yeah. And it was it was uh, interesting for me to uh, take some of the risk. That yeah, I took. big risk. Yeah, um, big risk because you're being paid very well. You're at the top of your game. You've been doing it for 20 plus years and, uh, and it's a regular paycheck. Yes, exactly. Uh, so the, you know, my wife says, you know, you know, she saw me reinvent myself and, uh, she said it was not, it was interesting to watch you, uh, in this period between 2001 and 2004, mm -hmm. you know, I just started painting. And she said, you were, uh, you were not uh, you know, distracted. She said, you were very focused mm. uh, with the things that you were doing. She's strategies, you know, that, and those are things that I tried to explain to my dad is about strategies, about um, adjusting to the world. Mm -hmm. And I spent a lot of time looking at publications and um, uh, from the fine art world, and especially Western art. You know, a lot of magazines at that time, there was a wildlife magazine that's not published anymore that published beautiful work mm -hmm. uh, of, of wildlife artists, Bateman and, and, and so on, you know, yeah. top guys. Right. And and th that was my influence uh, is to see what these guys were doing. Brenders, Carl Brenders. And a lot of people were, you know, these are, were photo real artists. And I thought, I can't compete with these guys. I, you know, they're, they're top of their game and I want to have a different appeal. And I just started painting with a palette knife mm. and, uh, and doing big scale work. And I didn't know if there was any uh, outlet for that, uh, but it's something that was, I was inspired by. And my wife was the one that encouraged me. She said, you know, you're, you're, um, she liked, she said, I like a lot of when your studies. She says, when you're drawing and you're putting a little color to a piece, she said, it's un it, it's you say it's unfinished, but for me, it's beautifully done. Mm -hmm. And you don't take it seriously. And I said, well, why would I take it seriously when I'm seeing this is what is in the publishing, in the publications, mm. really photo real. Right. And she said, but it has a different appeal. And we just got to, you know, you just got to find somebody who's going to understand what you're doing. And and so in, in 2004, I just thought, ha had this idea, I'm going to go to Aspen, Colorado mm -hmm. and see what's going on in Aspen. And I'm going to take a portfolio with me of my work, mm -hmm. you know, original portfolio of work, and and see what's what's out there. And uh, I, you know, loaded my kids and my wife in the, in the van and drove up to Aspen. Spent about three days in Aspen, and I walked around and, and looked at all the galleries, and I was like, "Whoa, this is there's not a lot here." <laughs> you know? Oh, there isn't. Uh, it, it, when it comes to art, and the art that I saw was, I was not, I was not impressed with. Right. And and uh, but I did. I, I walked into one gallery that it was a beautiful gallery on the main drag in, in Aspen. And I asked the, the owner that was there in the gallery if 
if uh, she would look at my work and she said, we don't take people just walking in off the street. I said, well, you know, here, here's my business card. You know, you know, maybe I could set up an apartment with you at some later date. And I had an image of one of my paintings on the, on the business card. And, and she looked at it, she says, is this your work? And I said, nah. She says, you did this artwork that's on the card? I'm like, yes. And she says, no, oh, this is interesting. And I said, well, I got 15 paintings in my van. You know, would you like to see the original works? She said, you got original artwork in your van. I'm like, mm. yeah. You know, can I bring them in? <laughs> and, she, and she just kind of looked at me and said, uh, okay, okay. At the end of the day, when I close the gallery, I'll let you come in and uh, I'll look at your work. And she did do that. And uh, I laid out 15 of my paintings. And, and she was just, she said, I'm floored by what you're capable of doing. Uh, I'd like to have a show for you. Wow. And she said, of all of the things that you've shown, she said, I see you doing photorealism to abstract. I see a range of things. What do you want to do? And I said, anything that you can sell. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and she's uh, she said, well, I like what you're doing with your drawing and your palette knife and, and your spontaneous works. Those are the works my wife said mm -hmm. would, would appeal to people. And so Nancy got it. And, and so then uh, when she opened, she did a show for me in 2005 and she sold most of the art. Mm. And she was impressed with my determination my point of view and 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 it, uh, we work well together and and i think that's how things started for me was through what, that what was that art gallery what was the name of that art gallery um uh, i don't I, I i don't want to put that name out there okay no got it but, uh, but the, you know uh, it was it was a very it was a very good experience uh to to have an art gallery owner right understand and i didn't have to deal with uh people that did not have a connection to what i was doing and it was uh it it it, it started things for me and then i got uh, uh she did some publications some ads mm -hmm. of my work i got a gallery in jackson then i then other people start to see the work and and I got into multiple other galleries, and uh, but the thing that was really cool about Aspen is, you know, international community, where you have people from all over the world looking at the work and liking the work. Yes. And uh, and 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 you know, didn't care about the pricing. No. It was no. the image. Yeah. Yeah. And the the, the thing that really surprised. Uh, uh, the owner was that she asked me, she said, do something you want to do. And because you're, you're selling well right now, you know, do something totally unexpected. So I did a painting of an eight foot by five foot, eight foot by four foot grizzly bear. Mm. And, and I painted that uh, with a palette knife. Mm. And, and uh, on that scale, and, and right, there was some brushwork in, involved with it also. But I took that painting into her. She, mm -hmm. you know, she didn't know what was coming. And, and when I drove it up there and, and took it out of my van and stood it, he says, ah, this is great. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can do anything with this, but right. it can get a lot of attention. And within a matter of a few days, she had sold the piece. Wow. And she said, can we afford this type of thing? Right. And, and so I, I started to do big scale pieces like that. And of wildlife, she, primarily. Oh, wildlife. Yeah. Moose, grizzly bears, polar bears, black bears, elk, foxes, wolves, you know, the whole range of right. Rocky Mountain wildlife. And she was, you know, she was just excited about that. Uh, the community, you know, there are multiple uh, pieces that collectors purchased. And she thought it was fascinating that. I'm getting people just sending me their credit cards mm. and not asking the cost of your work. And, and so that was, 
a, a great moment in my life to to be doing what I wanted to do in the manner I wanted to do it. And I had it had an appeal. And people are still um, uh, you know, invested in, in what I'm doing with that. So, you know, it, it was it was a really cool period. Uh, of doing that type of work. And I still want to do more of it. I've got some some things behind me that I've done uh, uh, and, and want to do more of. But, you know, a lot of galleries, you know, you know it's too big. You know, yeah. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking, yeah. So I'm doing commissions and I've done a, a number of commissions for a lot of the big scale homes. You know, they have 20 foot high ceilings. Right. I did a nine foot by five foot grizzly bear for a fellow. Wow. Uh, and uh, you know, I've done multiple commissions, uh, big scale pieces, just because most artists are working on a, you know, manageable scale, and I like big. I, yeah, I'm impressed. Uh, I impress myself <laughs> with scale. I yeah, like scale. scale. Great. I love big paintings personally. Myself, I do. I yeah. love. Oh God, yeah. I've always said the bigger the better. The only issue sometimes is you know wall space, but. You know, there isn't a painting yet that I've gotten that's too big. So, oh, okay. yep. Okay. One of the reasons I well, like it is because I know that an artist can only do so many of these big major works in their life, right? And so I'm getting to handle something that is um, special and rare that, okay. you know, often they just can't, you know, there's only so many that you have in you because it takes time. They take Often they take a lot more time to do depending on the artist. So for me, yeah. you know, it's like a special event. I get something that I know is unique and rare and I get to handle it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I like, you know, the, the, as a kid, when I started to go to art museums and you see all of these tremendous right. paintings that are just unbelievably big, you know, and, and a lot of these European artists that were doing a lot of detail. Right. And as a kid, I was like, wow, I want to do that someday. And uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm trying to satisfy that desire yeah. that I have to, to work on that scale. So when did you start and working would... with the more uh, Western subjects? Like behind you, you have this cowboy, you know, black cowboy on a horse, bucking bronco. When did you kind of start going into that and seeing that? And military you did some things like that. And maybe you could talk a little bit about your experience with the booth as well. Yeah, uh, the I, I've always wanted, I've always done this type of thing. You know, these were ideas that I shared with Hallmark Cards when I was working at Hallmark about doing things like this for the black community. Mm -hmm. And they just, you know, you know, that's, you know, that's not our market. And I was disappointed with that. That was that's the, the first time because I had I had read books. I knew a lot of that history. Yeah, and that's going back to, you know, nineteen seventy seven. And I'm thinking if I'm here to do the black image, then I know yep. what it's like to be black. Let me, yep, let exactly. me do that. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. Do it this way. Right, okay. And uh, Anheuser-Busch did a series of paintings where they used African-American artists, uh, Great Kings of Africa. Uh, and that was something that I saw when I was in college. Um, uh, that series started in the early 70s. And they were using artists from Detroit, New York, Chicago, different places. And when I, um, I wanted to be a part of that because it was doing the black image, historical mm -hmm. imagery. And I'm fascinated with history and, and uh, don't see a lot of people in the Western art world, in today's contemporary art world, dealing with the historical imagery that McCarthy and some of the other Western artists were doing, mm -hmm. um, telling that history. And but anyway, with uh, Anheuser Bush, they did this great this series. I was involved with it. I got a chance to do a piece for that series, and and then Miller Beer, uh, not uh, Coors. Coors did something on a calendar that Thomas and I worked on of uh, the Black West, mm -hmm. and I was like, cool. All of a sudden, here is an opportunity to do the Black image in a historical aspect, mm -hmm. and to do it. And they're wanting me to bring something to the table, my perspective, my point of view. And it was a great project to do. And uh, and, and that is when things really, uh, that that's always been there for me. 
looking for the opportunity for, to present that image. Mm-hmm. And I, so I've always done it, but I the resistance to that has been, it still goes on, you know, because a lot of people don't know that history mm-hmm. or unaware of it. I still right. and, and so for me, uh, when I started showing my work uh, in the galleries and I presented that image of uh, the black cowboy, uh, the resistance was we don't have a market for that. Uh, there's nobody interested in that. And I'm thinking, well, it's part of the history of the West. Right. Why right. is there an interest? And it was, you know, said to me, it's just, you know, they don't care about that. And, you know, that was a disappointment to me because I thought the fine art world would be, would be very accepting mm-hmm. of that, this image. And I showed it uh, to a number of galleries. And they went, no, 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 we'll take your animals. We, we don't want that. Mm. And so I, so I still did the paintings. Um, and the Booth Museum, Seth Hopkins, invited me to participate in an exhibition in 2009, along with Thomas Blackshear, Dean Mitchell, and some other African-American artists. And some of the pieces, I did a, a Bucking Bronco, and I did a Buffalo Soldier piece that I had sitting in my studio for about, oh God, years. Mm-hmm. And uh, when he asked me to participate in that exhibition, uh, and I'm like, what do you want to see? And he said, the black image. And I'm like, I've only got like two pieces that I have available. And, he, and I, when I showed them to him, he says, yeah, we'd like to have those in the exhibition. And so I did the exhibition with him. And the museum purchased those two pieces after the show was over. Hmm. And he and Seth has always been very encouraging and just said, you know, you need to be doing this. And I said, well, I don't have an outlet for it. Galleries don't think they can sell it. Uh, I'm not part of the Western art shows out West. Um, and and uh, I know John Garrity had, had invited me at one time mm-hmm. to be a part of that. But it, it didn't make any uh, sense to me at the time. Uh, to do that, but uh, but anyway, you know, that's when I first started doing the image and thinking I'm going to gradually try to find people that will respond mm. in a positive. And so I did uh, other paintings, and gradually things started to change. Uh, and and they, there was a major change in uh, 20, 2020. Mm-hmm. Uh, with uh, you know the all of the social unrest that we had, right, and, uh, and then all of a sudden there was an interest mm. in the black image, and as I was doing it, and uh, so I've been been very fortunate in recent years that all of a sudden it's there is an interest, and and I was like okay, uh, I'm I'm much older now. <laughs> Right, right. When I was in my twenties, and I had a lot of energy, and in my early thirties, and and uh, you know there was no interest. Now there's an interest, and I, you know, I'm slowing down. I don't paint as fast as I used to, Mm -hmm. but I'm enjoying doing this type of image, and and I've got sketchbooks full of concepts to do. It's just a matter of time, right? And uh, I have. Probably have more concepts than you have time to finish them all, probably, in reality. Exactly. Yeah, and there are just so many people, uh, you know, and that's part of the the whole thing of uh, of Black history in this country is, you know, you know, I did a painting of Bass Reeves and, you know, Marshall, you know, doing, uh, you know, on and on and on. There's Beckworth. There's a tremendous number of people that were present in the West. Yeah, that lived cowboy life, mountain men, miners, yeah, of you know, on and on and on. Something like thirty percent of the cowboys in America were black. Thirty yeah. percent. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, come on. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and also, you know, like that whole period of Reconstruction after the Civil War, you know, there were you know towns in Oklahoma and in Kansas. That were all black towns. You had yeah. marshals. You had you had storekeepers. You had saloons. You had all of these things happening. Yeah. 
And that imagery does not show up in permanent collections and museums. That imagery does not show up in some of the art shows that are being done in the West. And if we're getting the true history of the West, how do we exclude that many people right. of African descent that were blended into the culture, into the history of the settling of the American West? Yeah. And I, and that was something that I've I've had many discussions with art directors, not art 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 gallery owners, and so on about the absence of that image, and and uh, and I wanted to do it, and that I'm doing it now. It would would have been fun to have done some other things earlier on if I had a receptive audience, and and there's but you know just imagine all of the imagery that. We've seen over the years, you know, growing up with TV, cowboys on TV. No, I know, movie. right? You, know, you never saw a black cowboy unless it was a caricature or a celebrity that was, you know, being spotlighted, you know, for, for whatever reason. But, you know, there, I always thought that there's an absence of accuracy and detail and honesty with the lack of, of, you know, Remington did a few things. You know, I think Russell did a few things. Dixon did a drawing at uh, Beckworth. Yeah. He did, yeah. sure. And I've got a uh, depression era piece that he did too of a, you know, it's a black guy that he did. It's yeah. beautiful. It's an army museum that's hanging. And I've got a nude that he did, a black nude as well. So he would actually capture those essence. Yeah. 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 And, and I just know it's, you know, it's fascinating to me that uh, I think, that the absence, the lack of that image, yeah, um, and and I'm I'm very uh, fortunate and pleased that I've I've shown my work with Briscoe. Mm -hmm. You know, they purchased a piece for the permanent collection of mine. That's of a Black Pony Express ride, mm. and you know, the James Museum purchased a piece of Buffalo Soldiers um, from me. And, and these are these are things that I think uh, young kids or 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 just the black community going going to museums don't see these images that reflect their history. Right. And I, you know, I, I, I think that's kind of a disservice. Um, and and I, I, I'm always interested in history and people knowing the true history mm -hmm. and not to romanticize things that we've gotten for years and years and years. Uh, that is considered, this is what Western art is. Um, okay, that's part of it, uh, but there are other parts too that right. are just as fascinating, just as interesting. Let's 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 kind of if you, if you want to maybe change the 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 interest uh, in the Western art world right now, there's things that are upside down and sideways as mm -hmm. far as people trying to figure things out. Okay, w what what if you try different strategies, you know, in order to get interest? And get people really tuned into understanding the history as it really was, and not just as it's been presented to you. Mm -hmm. Propaganda sometimes gets uh, uh, a little painful to see over and over again. For me, I bet I, I want I want some different simulation. Uh, I've seen this. I've seen this. I've seen this. How about seeing something different? Uh, and even with you know the wildlife, uh, I like natural history museums, you know. And the way I'm wanting to do wildlife is like you know uh, a lot of the natural his history artists did it back in the early 1900s in this country, you know Audubon and and uh, you got lands down. You got a lot of people that were documenting without using photographs, but just drawing from specimens and so on, mm -hmm. and and really creating really beautiful work that is masterfully done and being appreciated on many different levels. Uh, so I, I, I'm, I'm wanting uh, the black image uh, to, to be more relevant to America, mm -hmm. you know, to, to be coming into the museums and, and the collectors that are collecting the works. There's, you know, there's, you know, this is also interesting imagery, you know, so. Yeah. But it's also our culture too, right? I mean, it's our history. It really is. Yeah. And it's been kind of shut out, especially 
And I agree in the West, it has definitely been shut out. But I do feel that there is a palpable change in how we're seeing the world and, and the shows that are happening. You know, there's a show right now in the Harwood that just opened, you know, you know, depicting cowboys from a black perspective, but like Clint Eastwood and those kind of things too, right? To show it in yeah. a different form. And that just opened. And so I, I like to see those kind of things happening. And it seems like, I mean, you, you're you on the front line, so you know more, better than anyone. You know, Do you see the change? Do you feel it? Is it palpable to you? Yes. Yeah, it is. And it's, um, you know, it's overdue for me. Yeah. Uh, but I, I know that the, uh, edu- well, uh, when I when I go to these shows and I'm talking about my work, you know, like the black image, uh, I, you know, I'm standing there talking and giving history and all of that, and I, and I'm educating people about these personalities and these people in these time periods, and sometimes I just think I'm a distraction because I want you know, uh, and that's been part of a, a strategy that I've all. I have used throughout my career is a lot of people just assumed I was Anglo <laughs> just by the work yeah. I was doing because they never saw me. Right. And, and as an illustrator and even up until recent years, you're going back maybe three, three years. Uh, I just didn't, uh, I like being in my studio. I enjoy working rather than being out in the world. Uh, and when I go out in the world, I want, I want it to be an experience mm. and I want to enjoy that. And, and so when I do go out to some of these shows now and people are talking to me and like, where do you come from? You know, how did you learn how to do this? And, and I'm kind of like, you know, uh, you know it, it's, it's not like, you know, I, I just came from another planet. <laughs> I, I, I'm an artist that, that does this and where well, you're doing all these different things. Most art, artists only concentrate in one area. And I'm saying I'm, I'm multidimensional here. Yes. And you know, I want people to enjoy the art and not be so distracted by me, mm. you know. And and uh, and that's one reason I, I have avoided going out a lot. But, you know, n- now that um, this history that I'm doing, the historical figures, um, you know, that's unfamiliar to a number of people. Mm-hmm. And needing to hear these stories and and I I try to share as much as I possibly can without taking too much attention away from the art. I want the art to be the centerpiece mm-hmm. and, and not me and where did I come from and right. who are you? Yeah, let the art speak yeah. for itself. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it does. I mean it, it does. I mean you look at that art and you go, that's fantastic. Tell me who tell me about Ezra Tucker. Yeah. I mean it's you know you're, you're a gift. I think you're a gift to, you know, the Western art world too, quite frankly. I, I do wow. I really believe what, that. Why what, what do you say that? Because I think you're opening eyes. You know, I think you're showing, you know, what the West is, right? You're doing it from a historical perspective as well. And um, we need to think, you know, when we think of cowboys, we sh- our first thought shouldn't be some white guy on a, on a horse. You know, it yeah. should be something different. You know, it should be more honest, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, and that and that's a part of the me writing. You know, I'm being asked to write and, and tell these stories. And when you to to read the history, of, you know, the vaqueros huh. are the ones that really taught blacks the cowboys and the white cowboys how to be cowboys. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Okay. And I, I we do see some of that imagery of you know the, the Mexican influence. On, on the West, we, that is in some of the art that is being recognized. And, and I, at the same time, I'm thinking, okay, now, how do, I can't do it all myself. No. You know, uh, to do the black image. But, you know, to, to do paintings of all of these guys that were out there and working, Anglo, Hispanics, you know, African-American people. You know, there's a whole range of things that I think would be really interesting in bringing more people to the art world, uh, if they can see variety rather than the same old thing over and over again, right? And you know, like you know, fur trappers, 
you know, Beckworth and, and there were other mountain men that I could name off. And mm -hmm. then you had, I mean, just on and on and on, just the imagery. Uh, I did a piece of uh, a painting of, of bison crossing the Yellowstone River with a steamboat in the background. Mm -hmm. The Yellow, uh, bison crossing the Missouri River, uh, the Yellowstone River. And, you know, that's interesting imagery to me. And, and, it, and it, it's not about ethnicity. ethnicity. It's just about telling some of the historical, using imagery that is interesting and unusual, mm -hmm. unexpected, in order to tell that narrative about what happened with people moving west, mm -hmm. you know, no matter what you know ethnicity they were. It's just that there's interesting imagery that is not redundant. Mm -hmm. I would like to bring with my work, and uh, because I, you know, the you know the Chinese working on the railroads and so on, and I know there are artists out there doing that type of image, beautiful mm -hmm. image. When that happened, when I first saw that, I'm like, yes, mm -hmm. there's there's an interest in telling the whole history here, right? And and uh, the, you know, I, I have this thing about uh, black Indians. You know, there are lots of escaped slaves and and slate and uh, blacks that moved west. Mm -hmm. During Reconstruction after the Civil War, they blended with the native tribes, mm -hmm. and, and you know Beckworth was supposedly a chief with the Crow Nation. Mm -hmm. you, know, you get all of this imagery, right? That stimulates me that I'm thinking I would love to see that in museum shows and in some of the Western shows, so that okay, it's another it's another guy on a horse, okay, mm -hmm. no name, yeah, just the guy on a horse, beautiful right. paintings. But I'm I'm always looking for more stimulation than just a pretty picture, yeah. And that's why I'm doing the historical aspect of it, the drama. Also, I like dramatic, mm -hmm. uh, and that's what I did as a commercial illustrator. Is I got a lot of the projects where you had dragons breathing fire and right. you know barbarians jumping out of the canvas at you, and you know in in the, in the world that we're in right now. Uh, Everything is kind of pleasant to sit on the wall. And I understand that. That's good. That's it's nothing wrong with that. But every now and then I want to do a growling grizzly bear. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, a Mustang jumping out of the frame. Yeah. And you know, those those are, are that's my sensibilities. Mm. Is and I just um uh, I want to enjoy what I do. Mm -hmm. And right now I'm I'm very fortunate to be Doing, doing well and uh, having the opportunity to present, as I see it, imagery of the, of the American West. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just want to see how far I can take it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think you'll take it quite far. think so? Okay. I do. As a You're driven. You're the same driven kid you were when you were, you know, seven years old. I mean, it's clearer to me, at least. Yeah. You're a dri driven individual who wants to make a difference, who's going to. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the last 20 plus years are going to be really interesting to watch what comes out of your fine art world career. You know, it's going to, you know, it's going to be very interesting. Thank you for that. I, I hope so. You know, the, there's just, like I said, there's so many ideas going on in my head constantly mm -hmm. that I just haven't had time to produce. And, and I want to produce them in a way that they can be entertaining, entertaining and educational mm -hmm. to people. And and not uh, otherwise then I fail. Uh, you know, doing narratives, uh, telling those stories. You know, N. C. Wyeth and that golden age of illustrators, the way that they told stories. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's those are the biggest influences on me. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of the European artists, the animal artists that were telling stories with animals, how animals, you know, interacted with each other. Whether it was, you know, uh, into a very intimate moment or a very brutal moment, where mm -hmm. you know, you know you've got a jaguar devouring a rabbit or something, you know, that's mm -hmm. that's reality, that's real. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that whole range of stimulation of getting things in front of people that make them think and ask questions and do research. Uh, I like research. I enjoy research. Mm -hmm. I'm always researching. And because I'm finding new stories all day, every day. Mm -hmm. And I just think, you know, if, if we have an, uh, more people 
uh, educated about the history and details and facts. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it makes a much, much more interesting party or, yeah, or I agree. neighborhood. Yeah, I agree. And I think we'll see more of that. I do. I know we will. You know, I think it's incumbent. I actually think it's in, incumbent on us as art dealers to make sure, especially if we deal on the Western material, that we tell the whole story, not just the story we want to hear. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's really important. So how how do people find you if they want to, you know, buy your art? You know, I've been to your website. So maybe you can give us your website name, maybe your Instagram, other ways that people can find your work if they're interested in seeing it and maybe buying work. My website is Ezra Tucker.com. Mm-hmm. And all of the galleries that are representing my work right now are listed on my website. Mm-hmm. So it's just a matter of contacting one of the galleries or contacting me directly. And, and I can point you in the right direction. Um, you know, the, the, um, uh, right now I'm preparing for a tour, a museum tour of my artwork, mm-hmm. uh, animals, my wildlife art, and my narrative pieces of historical figures. And that's going to begin in uh, June, July of 2023. Mm-hmm. So I've got like, you know, I think it's 11 museums around the country that will be hosting wow. my exhibition. That's huge. And, yeah, it's it's it's. I'm painting a lot. <laughs> you know, yeah. to, to, uh, so eleven museum get, show. So that's probably going to run a long time, right? That's how, how is that going to be years it'll long? Through, like, it'll run through 2025, I believe it is. Oh, that's cool. And uh, so I'm, I'm working with a curator to um, to structure the. The logistics of, of moving that exhibition around. Mm. I'm going to have at least 37 paintings in the in the exhibition. Wow! And, uh, it's going to Chicago and New Jersey, uh, uh, Stockton, California, Houston, Texas, Redding, California, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, uh, San Angelo, Fort Wayne, that's Texas, Indiana, and San Angelo is in Texas. So I've got, and all of that is listed on my, on my website about the museum tour. Mm-hmm. But this is something that is, uh, you know, it's fascinating because it's, it's about the work that I want to show, mm-hmm. and so that people can be familiar. Also, the educational aspect of it, um, I think, is is what I'm looking forward to. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm participating in the uh, Tucson Museum of Art uh, exhibition at the museum there right now. That's up right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I have a piece in that exhibition of a Buffalo Soldier. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was recently in an exhibition at the Norman Rockwell Museum. Um, and that show had just come down. And uh, again, it's people interested in the in the uh, the image of of people of African descent, you know, being represented in the Western mm-hmm. with, within the Western world. Uh, so it's, you know, I'm getting opportunities to show that type of image and I'm enjoying it. There's, uh, you know, this tour, uh, it's going to go on for that a long, long amount of time. Long and, time. Uh, I'm, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to expect from it, but uh, I know to be, to have the work shown at the Chicago Academy of Science mm-hmm. is probably going to be a really uh, nice event and, and uh, it opens up to a broad range of communities, you know, uh, hopefully to see that exhibition. Mm-hmm. So it's, it, it, it's, it's, this is an interesting time in life here because I'm, I'm trying to uh, paint mm-hmm. and focus on doing the work as I feel comfortable with and how I want to present it mm-hmm. and not worried about time and money and all of that, but I want to do, the quality of work that excites me. And I think it will, once I show that, uh, I will get a positive response from people. Oh yeah. Uh, that view the work. And, uh, and I have a number of collectors that uh, are just, you know, they're like, that's, you know, that's a big risk. And that's a big, uh, uh, that's a huge ambition 
to mm-hmm. do that. And I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty cool. like, I'm ready. Mm-hmm. I don't think you've ever I lacked that. that. I don't think you've ever lacked ambition or risk. <laughs> I can tell you, well, I can, I, you know, your dad would be so amazed when he, if he could be around to see what you did and became and that, you know, 11 museums are showing his son's work. You know, he just he probably wouldn't have been surprised, but he would have been amazed. You know? I, I think he, yeah, I hear you and I, I'm sure he would. Uh, he was proud of me, he, and he did say that before he passed away, that you know he was just very proud of the the risk that I had taken, yeah, and the su- success that I had achieved. Yeah. And he said, "And you're still my little son, yeah, you know, he's still Ezra." Yeah, and she said, "You know, you were just like you are now is the way you were when you were a kid, mm-hmm. and you drove us nuts because you had so much energy, mm-hmm. and you always had the interest that we didn't know what you were doing." Uh, but you were always doing something that people found amazing and different. Hmm. That's just, I guess, the way I'm going to I'm going to go out of here. Yeah, is, uh, you know, yeah. that's not a bad way though. That's not a bad legacy, my friend. Okay. You know, all right. We should all be so lucky, especially as artists. I mean, you know better than most. It's a hard road to be an artist. It is, and it's changed. Uh, the the artwork, you know, I have a son that's twenty seven, and he's wanting to to. He's in the fine art world right now, and he's uh, the the challenges he's going to have mm-hmm. are very different than what I have, mm-hmm. and there would be some overlap. There's some similarities, but the um, the passion, uh, and and he was saying this to me at Thanksgiving. He says, you're in your studio all the time, Dad. You never leave the house. And I said, no, I go out every now and then. Mm-hmm. He says, yeah, to get things done, then you're right back in your studio working. And I said, well, why leave us a place that you're comfortable? Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, my my studio is very comfortable for me. I designed it to be comfortable. And I'm, I'm creating, and I have my, my my research library here, my supplies. I'm all I'm all. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm I'm all together, mm-hmm. and uh, I enjoy what I'm doing. And I'm saying to him because he's he's like, you know, Dad, I I can't. He's single, you know, uh, and he's kind of like, well, a lot of young ladies don't understand what I'm doing. And I said, no, they won't understand. But uh, you got to be you. You got to live that uh, your truth. And uh, but it's it's a very different world, and I think it's. Uh, I'm hoping that traditional never goes away you know and i know digital is what a lot of young people are doing right now because of technology Mm -hmm. and uh creating with your hands you know that just feels good uh to me and i'm thinking it's probably good therapy for everybody Mm -hmm. to to be actively creating Uh, and that's i've always believed that Uh, if you're not creating then you know I can't imagine not doing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, no. but you, you as a doctor, you know, it would be in the medical field. You know, it's, you know, you, you see people probably get into spaces that are maybe unhealthy and, and there are reasons for that. Yeah. No, creativity is the way out of the dark hole, in my opinion, uh, in so many levels, whatever it may be, whether it's writing or, art or any of those kind of disciplines you know yes. that's creativity sets you free yes yeah. Uh, yeah and that's my wife's an artist i've got three kids and they're all creative one's a musician one's an engineer another's oh, an artist what a gift. and so there's a lot of cre- creativity coming through this house yeah. and, and mm-hmm. I, I enjoy that well ezra thank you so much for taking the time you know, this is going to be a two-parter. I can tell you that right now because we talked for over two hours. I don't know. Ooh, That's good. Know that. No, you know why? Because we're having fun and we're having a dialogue. And that's what it's all about. And learning. And for me, it was exciting. I, I just, you know, I love to hear these stories of struggle, of commitment, um, of how somebody like yourself you know, is all in from day one and is just not going to give up because being an artist is a tough way to go. 
and uh, you know but it can be beautiful and clearly it's been beautiful for you hasn't been easy never been easy and i think yours is harder than a lot because you not only had to deal with the art aspects but you have to deal with the racial stuff too so you know but man i'm glad i got to know you well i'm glad i got a chance to meet you too and and you're you're writing i'm my wife's read your book i'm oh, good reading. loving it very impressive that you can do all of this yeah so well i'm driven I guess, sharing like you and i'm excited to see your new painting for our rodeo show it's going to be a great addition i'm really excited about that all right and uh hopefully it will meet your standards oh it will you, you have a very critical eye uh -huh. I, I know that. so that's all good oh no it, it, it'll meet yeah. it I'm not, i don't even have a worry about that not one bit so i just hope you can come to, right. to tucson in february you're gonna have fun if you can but i understand if you can yeah. you're a busy guy and you got lots of stuff and you want to be in your studio working i do i get it i do and if i can uh like i said if, when i leave i want it to be you know i want to have an event that is stimulating mm -hmm. and your 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 gallery is just unbelievably stimulating thank you i i love being in that space and seeing it recently thank you very much my wife did too Thank Excellent. You. Yeah, no, I like your yeah. wife. She, she was like, oh, yeah, we need Ezra in this show. I was like, thank you. <laughs> yeah, she's my, she's a good agent. <laughs> yeah, she's fantastic. She yeah. really. All right. Well, very thank good. You. I will uh, keep in touch and I'll let you know when this when this goes out. But uh, it was wonderful having you on. It's going to be a two parter. All right. All thank right. Thank you, young man. I didn't. Uh, thank you. I'm not that much younger than you. I got news, unfortunately. You, you and I are closer to age than you might imagine. So, okay. Yep. Well, I just, but I'll just take young man. Easy. I'll take it. Absolutely. Very good. All right. I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. All right. You will. You too.